taste the grace. There's rest for the weary, rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure.
Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm Pastor Scott, and welcome to First Church as we gather together here today. And for all of you at home watching on Facebook Live, we welcome you as well. And to all the mothers and all the ladies within the house today, happy Mother's Day. I tried to get you a good sunny day. I apologize for that, but it's still a blessing in its own self. We want to remind everybody that to fill out virtual connection cards, if you can fill those out uh, online, there is firstchurchnork.org. A reminder for us, as we are in this time and this season, uh, we are in two worship services, as you know, 9 and 11. Uh, we have been in conversation as should we continue to stay with our two worship services or looking into perhaps going to one worship service. And after we have been in conversation, uh, Pastor Barb and myself and, and a couple of our worship leaders, uh, we, had, we had determined that it would probably be best, the best thing is to continue to stay with two, and, uh, and we will transition from those two on June 6th, uh, having the first service, this service at 9 o'clock, being a traditional service, and then the service at 11 o'clock being a praise and worship service, and uh, we will begin to do that on June 6th. We're hoping to be able to get back to what it could be normal pre-pandemic, whatever that looks like. I don't know. Anybody remember what happened a year, year and a half ago? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, we're trying to slowly transition back into that, and um, in the pastoral staff and the worship team will continue to evaluate where that goes uh, in the summer and continue to look at that. So we will trans transition into two services on uh, June 6th, a traditional and a praise and worship. Today we are starting back with our uh, children's Sunday school and youth Sunday school. So uh, that starts off. We're happy to be able to start back into those things slowly as well. And children's choir will start after uh, uh, church today, I believe, is when they're going to do that. Uh, also, we have uh, the church open for small groups, and with that as well, please contact uh, the church office if you're interested in having a small group. Uh, appreciate everybody as they come uh, with the groups and everybody as we are today, social distancing and wearing masks because that is still in place as well. Uh, registration for Child of God Preschool is going on. Uh, contact Nancy Higgins here at the church. Uh, we have a work week on uh, work day, actually, next Saturday, May 15th at 8.30. Uh, we'll be planting flowers, and so hopefully you can come and help with that. And also, next Sunday is Graduation Sunday. We'll celebrate Graduation Sunday. If you have any graduates that you may know of within your family, uh, please contact us at the church, and uh, we want to celebrate that along with you and your family. Uh, I have another announcement that we want to share. I'm going to ask uh, Beth Phelps uh, to come forward at this time. Uh, Beth uh, is, our, is our chair of our staff pastor uh, relations committee, and, uh, and she has something that she is going to share with us at this time. Thank you, Beth. Good morning. My name is Beth Phelps, and I'm serving on our leadership team, and I'm also the chairperson of Staff Parish Relations Committee. Also on the SPRC with me are Warren Adams, Diana Brest, and Jeff Walker. One of our more exciting duties is to announce new pastors, and I know you're eager to hear who will be our new lead pastor. I want you to know a little bit about the process, the search that has occurred. The search for a new pastor is not like spinning a wheel to see who comes up, nor is it akin to a quick mindless fix with the easiest piece of nearby duct tape. In the past few weeks, we've been fortunate to have the leadership and knowledge of our district superintendent, Reverend Tim Bias, and I know that Bishop Palmer and his cabinet have spent quite a few hours over several days on our behalf in identifying the right person for us. In fact, I've been told more than once that the search for a lead pastor at First United Methodist Church was a priority for them, to use our district superintendent's words, and that was reassuring to hear. For our part, the SPRC was asked to submit a list of traits and skills that we would like to see in a pastor. 
Of course, as probably often happens with that 12-item list, we ended up asking for someone who would have to be a superhero to meet all that we think we need. But still, our list was personalized to our church, including support and guidance for the parking lot project, among other skills. We were able to discuss the items on our wish list with Reverend Bias in a Zoom meeting on Tuesday, April 27th. Exactly one week later, on Tuesday, May 4th, Reverend Bias called me to say, and I quote, the bishop and the cabinet are convinced that they have the right person to become your next lead pastor. That too was reassuring. They are convinced. The very next night, this past Wednesday night, we, the SPRC, and Tawny Myers, our leadership team chairperson, gathered in the Wesley Room, awaiting the arrival of our district superintendent with our next lead pastor. As we waited, several of us were thinking about all the changes that we've seen in the pulpit over the past 10 years or so, more turnover than many of us were used to in our typical church lives. We know, as do you, that change can be hard on a church. We were also thinking about the kinds of change that we all have faced since March of last year in every facet of our lives and how the pandemic has been wearing on everyone. And here we were, awaiting yet another significant change and wondering how it would impact our church and our church family. We knew how we ought to feel about change, but our hearts were still thumping a little. When Reverend Bias began to talk with us, he repeated what he had said to me. The bishop and the cabinet are convinced that they have identified the right person to match with your list of wants and needs. And he added, I am also convinced. Then he might have read our minds a little bit because he said that his colleagues had also discussed at length the pastoral changes that First Church has experienced. And then he said, because the bishop and the cabinet are convinced there is a strong match between your church and the candidate, because I, as your district superintendent, am convinced, I want you to know that you will not experience undue change with the next lead pastor. It is someone you know. You have her right now. Her name is Reverend Barbara Salyers. I'll tell her you said that. <laughs> now, Barbara's not here this morning because her daughter, Rachel, is graduating from the University of Indianapolis grad school with a master's in gerontology and a doctorate in occupational therapy. Yes, wow. But please know that she has put as much thought and prayer into accepting this new position with faith and excitement as we all have given in the search. She will be eager to see you and hear your kind words. So now we are needing a new associate pastor. Reverend Bias has said that it might be a while before the right person can be identified to fill that important role, so please be patient. Meanwhile, Barb is sure that with our help, she can keep us on a good path until that new person is identified to partner with her. She will be working with Reverend Bias in that search, as will our SPRC, and we all ask for your continued prayers in finding that right person. The announcement of Reverend Barbara Salyers as our new lead pastor will also be sent to you in a letter soon, because that is our tradition. We will also include it in the newsletter, The Pioneer, as soon as we can. We're excited to see Barb move into this new spot, and we know that she is too. There have been 23 larger churches in the West Ohio Conference that have received new pastors this spring, but we are the only one to be blessed with the special person of God. That is Barb Salyers. Thank you. sharing along with us on this great announcement and as Beth had shared that this is a great opportunity for us all um, to continue uh, to do the work in, in, of Jesus Christ our Savior and, uh, and I know that many of you will continue to support Barb uh, in, in this process as well and so we just continue to lift her up in prayer and I want to ask you to continue to do that um, to lift up Pastor Barb um, and the leadership 
and our worship and everybody in prayer today. Um, so let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer as we continue to move forward with our opening hymn. Lord God, we, we come before you lifting up Barb to you. Lord God, as, as this announcement comes, Lord, we pray for the powerful anointing of the Holy Spirit to be upon her. Lord God, we know that as we are called into ministry, we're called as well, Lord God, to be faithful to you. And Barb has been faithful to you, Lord God. And Lord, as, as you place the, the anointing of the Spirit upon her, Lord, we ask that anointing to be with your church here, which is called First United Methodist Church. Lord, you have blessed this church, you have blessed this congregation beyond measure. And Lord, we know that there are many more blessings as we may see them, as we continue to follow your will and your way. Because, Lord, that is why we come to worship you, knowing, oh God, that you have a plan, greater plans that we cannot see today. And those plans, oh Lord God, are being revealed to us piece by piece, just like the one that puts together stained glass and picks the right piece to be placed at the right place to see a beautiful portrait presented to us. Hey, Lord God, as we continue to worship today, you have picked this piece to be with us, O oh God. You have picked all that you have given to us now in the power of the Holy Spirit to be with us as we continue to worship you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us continue to worship.
in prayer. Our gracious, loving God, as we come before you in this hour, on bended knee with bended hearts, with many prayers within our own hearts, O oh Lord God, you know each and every one of them individually. Lord God, we pray for healing. We pray for comfort. We pray for peace. We pray for our church. We pray for our community and world. And knowing, O oh God, that you are in the midst of all these things, guiding, leading, protecting, watching over us. Lord, we have so much and so many prayers today. We lift up those that are in need, that are struggling today. We ask thy blessing to be upon us, Lord, as we continue to worship you. We pray for that anointing of the power of the Holy Spirit to be on us, guiding us, and leading us. And we give you thanks, O God, knowing that you are always with us and that you sit with us today. And you find us in this place and this hour as we search, reaching out to you. Draw us yet nearer, yet even nearer to you, O God in this time, and we thank you for always being there as being the great shepherd for us, and we come together acknowledging you in this way, and we come together joining in that prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>
Thank you, choir. This morning, uh, the scripture we share together is known as the Great Commission. And it comes for us in the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 16 through 20. Uh, let us hear these words. Let us stand as uh, the reading of the Word of God is presented to us today. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Gracious, loving God, we give you thanks for your Word that you have breathed into it the breath of life. And Lord, as we continue to pray for your guidance, we ask, O oh God, that the words that I speak be blessed by you, O oh God, and that as we meditate on your holy word and the spoken word, we know without a shadow of a doubt that the power of the Holy Spirit can work in us today. And it's in the name of our resurrected Savior, Jesus the Christ, we pray all of these things. Amen and amen. I sat back and as we had announced with Pastor Barb's announcement. I thought about my own journey in ministry, of being in ministry this year for 25 years. And I thought in that time of where we have been and where has God called and placed us to be in ministry. We have been protecting the state line up near Michigan from those people up north, if you know what I mean, from the university up there. Who was that? That's what I thought. We've been down the southern Ohio. We've been northwest and here. But the thing that I have seen through 25 years of ministry, and I'm sure perhaps Pastor Barb and any other clergy person would say, ministry doesn't change. Because the gospel is still alive and well, and that the gospel needs to continue to be proclaimed out into the world to all people. And that is where Jesus comes with, as we know it, the great commission, the great command. I believe that we are all called in special ways, we're all called with a special purpose. Perhaps for myself and Pastor Barb in the clergy setting, we are called and set apart in this setting. But we all together are called to do one thing. Go. Go. This command that Jesus shares was the last command given to the chosen disciples after Christ's resurrection and just before Jesus ascended to heaven, which we will celebrate next Sunday on Ascension Sunday. The last command. So I think about that when Jesus gives this last command, often at times when you tell a story or whatever it is, when you can come to the conclusion, you want to make one final point that is extremely important. And I believe that's what Jesus is saying here. Jesus has given his final point to the disciples, and he gives it to us as well, that when he says, go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I love what Jesus does here. He brings together the Trinitarian God, amen, 
He brings it together to know that there has been a God that has created. There has been a God that has come. There has been a God that has given to us that tells us that the power will be with us trusting in God. What we find in this as well, in that power, there are things that Jesus shares with us, and I will share with us these three things in this scripture. The first thing that Jesus had shared with them is that he assured them of his power. He assured them of his power. He says in there at the second portion of verse 18, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, Jesus said. God gave him the authority. And of course, as we know, we are celebrating and worshiping the Trinitarian God that came to the earth. All authority and all power has been given to him. We know in the scripture, even though they had worshipped him, they've been in the presence and we're in the presence of God today. Do you believe that, church? Amen. Amen. We are in the presence of God today, worshipping God. We're worshipping God in our own way, whatever it may be, through song, through scripture reading, through prayers, or whatever it is. They had worshipped God, but there is a scripture in here as well that said, some doubt it. Some doubt it. Even then at that time, after they had seen the resurrected Savior, Jesus, some doubt it. Perhaps we can be like that. Perhaps that's where we may be, that there might be a shadow of doubt in our mind today. That's all right. Because doubt can push us to the edge, I believe. It can challenge us. Carol Lee and I doubt if we will ever find a house in Dayton, Ohio. With all the house hunting we've been doing, we keep getting pushed back. But we believe that God will give us one. We know that God will. Some doubt it. So I ask ourselves, as he assured them of his power, where have you seen the power of Jesus lately? Where have you seen Jesus working in your life? Do do we believe that God created the heavens and the earth? There's power in that. Amen. Do we believe that Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead? Yes, we do. Do we believe that Jesus was resurrected from the dead? Yes, we do. And that is the power that is given to us. And I love the old hymn, and I wish we could sing it. We don't sing it enough around here, Jeff. You know me. There is what? Power in the blood, power in the blood, amen? There's power in the blood, if you believe. There's power in the name of Jesus Christ. And we have to believe that, that he has all power and authority, and he has assured them of that power, of healing, of strength that is out there for them in the world. While some doubted and sat back, Jesus gave them the commandment. The second thing is this. He gave them a commission. He gave them a commission. We know it as the great commission. We know it as the great commandment. He shares with them in there, and then he says, All authority in heaven has been given to me, therefore. And I always love that. It's there for a reason, right? That power has been given to him. And what I like to see in this is Jesus is transferring the power over to you. It's like a relay race. I love watching track races, and I love in particular watching the very last race, if you've ever been to a high school track meet, the 4x400. Anybody running a 4x400? No track people? There we go. We got one in the choir. It always comes down to that last race. And it always comes down to that point, and you got four people running in this race. A coach will always try to put the best person out in front and bring the strongest person at the rear. And as Jesus is handing the power and the authority, he's handed the baton over to you because he knows the strength that is in you. you got to believe that the strength is in you. And I've seen kids and, and, and college runners come from far behind and say, I am going to overcome that obstacle. And they get that baton, and they continue to run. And Jesus says, therefore, 
Go, I believe in you. Go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. What's a disciple? A disciple is a passionate follower of Jesus Christ. A passionate follower because Jesus has been with you. Jesus has been with these disciples. They have seen what has Jesus done. And they want to go out and be passionate and tell people about Jesus Christ. Jesus called people like Peter, Andrew, and other disciples as well that didn't believe that they could do it. But they began to see the power that has been given to us. Ordinary people who didn't think they could. But Jesus believed in them. And Jesus believes in each and every one of us today. One of my favorite pastors that I love to follow is Francis Chan. I don't know if you're familiar with Francis Chan. Uh, he, he wrote a, a lot of great books. He had a strong church out in California. He left the church completely. Went over to Korea, or, or uh, over Korea I think it was, where he went and came back. Francis Chan says this in his book, Multiply. The call to be a disciple of Jesus Christ is open to everyone. But we don't get to write our own job description. Hmm. If Jesus is Lord, then he sets the agenda. Do you hear what Francis says? We don't get to write our own job description. He sets the agenda. The agenda is to tell others. Tell others about Jesus. In Matthew 10, 5 and 6, Jesus says in there, go to the lost sheep of Israel. He says, go to the lost sheep. But here in this text, he says, now he says, go to all the nations. Go to all people. we got to go out and share the message of Jesus Christ. The church is, that is not going out, the church that is not moving and sharing the story is not the church that Jesus intended it to be. We were not told to come to a nice, beautiful building. We were not told to come and, and listen to the music and show up for an hour and then go home or go to Bob Evans or wherever we go after our hour is done. Jesus told us to go. Go out in the world and make disciples. Carrie Newhoff, uh, also another individual, another pastor that I follow, I was on a webinar with Kerry Newhoff about a, about a month ago. Kerry Newhoff said this, the church needs to go from the church from come to see to the church to go and be. We have been a church of come to see for so many years. Now we need to be the church to go and be the church because that's where we are called to go out and be the church. We got to remember that we have the presence of the Trinitarian God that is with us always and forever leading us and guiding us. And the disciples went. The disciples went out and told people. I love in the book of Acts, in the second chapter of Acts, it says this, Peter, as he's out there, he ran, reached out and replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he pleaded them and reached out to them. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship and the breaking of bread and to prayer. They devoted themselves. And that's what Jesus says. He says, go out and teach teaching them to obey everything that God has presented to us today. And the third thing is this. He promised them His presence. He promised them His presence. This is a promise that is given to us. The Scriptures are full of promises. All the way back from the rainbow to this point as well, and the promises of the heavens that will be there for each and every one of us. The promise is there for us. And He promised that He will be with them. 
It ends with the never-failing presence of God in our lives today. And this is our promise for us. And this is the promise that is for all people. We live in a world today that is hurt. We live in a world today that is hungry. We live in a world today that is thirsting to know more and more about this power that is out there readily available. You have the baton in your hand. You may feel like we can't do it. We may feel like we're not going to get to that finish line. Wherever that finish line is, maybe you just received the baton. Maybe you're 10 yards away from the finish line. Wherever you may be in your life, we don't ever want to give up hope. Why is that? Because our hope lies within Jesus Christ. And the hope that we have within Jesus Christ is all that we need. Think back when they saw Jesus being buried in the tomb. They may have lost hope. But when they saw Him resurrected, their strength was renewed. May we find that renewed strength in our Savior Jesus Christ today, knowing that He has given us His power. He's given us the Great Commission, and He's promised the presence to be with us always. When we put our faith and trust in Him, God, God will work in us and do amazing things in our lives today. Will you join with me in prayer? Gracious, loving God, we give you thanks for your presence of being with us today. May we breathe in the power of your Holy Spirit. May we breathe in your breath of life. knowing that you are here. We pray, oh God, that you build your kingdom right now. You build your kingdom right here today, knowing that you are giving us the strength and the power to go out and share the love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray all of these things. Amen and amen. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil what we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope. Like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come and reign.
May the kingdom be built with each and every one of us. And as he gives us the great commission to go, go and tell people about how Jesus has touched your life today. It is in his name we pray all of these things. Amen. Amen. Please remain seated as we continue to worship with the postlude and our ushers will release you.